It is a God with love and compassion for man. Okay. Thank you very much, and we're going to take a break, and when we come right on back, we're going to uh, have a little discussion further with our men, so stick with us. All right, we're back, and uh, my first question is going to be to uh, Dr. Hussein Morrissey, and uh, my question is this. I'm going to read a passage from the Koran, and then I'm going to ask you a question. In the Quran, in Surah 547 through 51, it says, It was we who revealed the law, talking about the law of Moses, therein was guidance and light. By its standards have been judged the Jews, by the prophets, now we got the prophets, who bowed to God's will, by the rabbis and the doctors of the law, for to them was entrusted the protection of God's book. So the law and the prophets are said to be God's book. And in their footsteps, after that, we sent Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming the law, the Torah, that had come before him. We sent him the gospel. Therein was guidance and light. Let the people of the gospel judge by what God has revealed therein, the law, the prophets, the gospel. If any fail to judge by what God has revealed, they are no better than what? Rebels. To thee we sent the scripture in truth, that's the Koran, confirming the scripture that came before it, that's the Bible, and guarding it in safety. So judge between them by what God has revealed and do not follow their vain desires, diverging from the truth that has come to thee. Now it's called truth. Now, if the Christian is to obey the teaching of the Koran, he's going to read the books of Moses, the law. He's going to read the prophets. He's going to listen to what Jesus said in the Gospels. He's going to listen to the apostles. And when he does that, he's going to find out that first, in 2 Peter 1.17, the Father is declared to be God, for he received honor and glory from God the Father. Second, the Son is declared to be God in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Third, the Holy Spirit is declared to be God in Acts 5, 3, and 4. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you've lied to the Holy Spirit? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied to men, but to God. And finally, when you look at the prophets and you look at the law of Moses, Deuteronomy 6, 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You put all that together, the Christian says, God revealed it to us. He's the one who should know what he's like. And he said, in the Quran, it says, you were to look at that. You put them together. These three persons are the one God, whether we understand it or not. Why? Because he revealed it to us. There's only one God who manifests himself to us as three persons, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. So Jesus and Matthew could say, go and baptize in the name singular, of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We don't understand it, but God has revealed it to us. How do you get around obeying that and not holding on to the concept of a triune God when the Quran points us right to that information? What you are concluding here are theological doctrines that were never taught by Jesus, was never taught by Moses, was never taught by Abraham, was never taught by any of the uh, prophets. Now, you brought up multiple points that I would like to address them if I have the time one by one, but at least I will address the most important one for just the sake of uh, time. Nowhere does we mean Trinity. If we say me, we means plural, anyone that's familiar with the Semitic language like the e Hebrew and the Arabic will know that there is a plural of respect and there is a plural of number. The we and the us that's mentioned in the Old Testament and in the Quran refers to the plural of respect of God Almighty. Even the Queen of England, John, says we. It does not mean that there is multiple queens here. This is number one. Number two, if God is a triune God, then Jesus does not have to beat around the bush and does not have to rely on theologians, he does not have to rely on interpretation. He would have just came out when someone asked him, what is the first of all the commandments? He said, here, O Israel, the Lord our God is a triune God. Yet he did not. He said, here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Therefore, you shall worship the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, and with all thy spirit. This, in essence, 
is the core expression of faith in Islam. La ilaha illallah. There is no one to be worshipped but the one and the only mighty God. Now let me remind you also, John, that Jesus, peace be upon him, put his forehead to the ground and prayed to God. And that Jesus referred to God Almighty as my Father, your Father, my God, and your God. So nowhere does it say that God is a triune. This is a byproduct of the theology of the Council of Nicaea in the year 325. If you study the history of Christianity, okay. you will find out that they said God is two, and then the second conference of Nicaea added number three to it. So this has nothing okay. to do Can with I Jesus. Can I one thing about your oh. interpretation of the Bible, John? Because I think there are two major mistakes. First of all, you're implying that the Bible confer the Quran confirms the Bible. Nowhere in the Quran does it confirm the Bible, never mentioned, or Old Testament, or New Testaments, or Gospels in plural. What the Quran deals with is the Torah given to Moses, and that does not even include the Pentateuch, because the Pentateuch speaks about the death and burial of Moses. Okay. It speaks about God revealed, right. and what hold God on. revealed to Jesus. All right, hold on. Let me, let me ask one question to you, and then I'm going to come to these men, because we got such short time. The verses that I was reading, Matthew 28, 19, 1 Peter, and Acts, what is that literature? That literature is a combination of biography about Jesus by Matthew and statements of faith and belief by the other writers, not what the Quran teach about, which is the teaching of Jesus himself. Where we don't regard them as the same. Yeah. Where is that teaching that you're talking that about? That teaching is partly included in the, in the uh, Gospels, partly lost, but the Quran, as you quoted yourself, keeping it in safety, that means the Quran came to confirm what remained intact. So our criterion as Muslims, that anything in the Gospels, that is consistent with the Quran, which is the last revelation and criterion, is regarded as the teaching of Jesus. All right. It is there, yes. All right, we've got only four minutes left.